Welcome to Jamie TV where we do not pissy pants about. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new groove box that is 25 years old. In the 90s when Brambos was a student, he coded himself a software groove box. It wasn't meant for mass consumption, but ultimately it was uploaded to a server and millions of people downloaded it. Over the years, many people have loved and adored Hammerhead. But you can't really run it now unless you have a very old operating system. But 25 years on, Brambos is one of the leading developers of iOS music software. And he's brought us a 25th anniversary supercharged version of his little shark. And I can't remember what I'm supposed to say next, so let's check out another quick demo. Now you might look at me and think, stupid old hippie, this guy's got no real interest in 90s groove boxes, and I'd have to say, honestly, you couldn't be any more wrong. Apart from the bit about me being a stupid old hippie, of course, but I love pissy panting around with anything like this, especially anything that makes drum noises. But speaking of drums, I've found that this app is capable of far more than just making 90s electronic drum noises. In fact, far more than just drum noises, it goes way beyond that. So let us dig in, we'll have a look at how it works, and then I'll show you some of the other stuff that I've been doing with it. Here's Hammerhead in standalone mode and I was going to do the tutorial like this because it takes up the full screen and I thought that'd be a great way for you to get a look at it, but I'm not and I'll just show you very quickly why because I have the volume brought down to a, a level that I can speak over this lovely sequence, this preset called Future Dance, but when I change preset the volume shoots up to a preset position. So every time I change the preset, it's gonna do that. So I'm gonna get rid of this standalone mode and we'll go over to AUM. When we open up Hammerhead inside of AUM, you'll see that we get half an app. And if we click on this view mode button at the bottom here, we get the other half of the app. Or we can just drag it out like this and get a view of the full thing. When Hammerhead opens up, there will be no information in this sequencer here. So if I press play, nothing's gonna happen. So let's go to load preset and you'll see we've got four banks of drum kits and drum sequencers here. And user patches, of course, this is where you're gonna save your own. In factory, these are Brahms drum kit sounds. And if I select one and load it up and press play, and drop that volume there in AUM. You'll see that when I load in the kit, it loads in some sequences, and you can see those patterns looping around up here. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Let's go back to load preset, and you'll see here in guests, we have some kits and sequences provided by iOS music experts and YouTube gods. Let's have something from Dean from Electronic Sounds. Nobody does this kind of sequence quite like Dean does. The man is a legend. We've got, oh, let's have a listen to this. This will give you a really good example of how Hammerhead can be used, not just as a, as a drum machine. It does much more than that. And um, let's have something from the hack. Here we are. What? There's a sequence here from the Mad Swedish Sausage. which is really nice and something really Heimbarky from Heimbark. All these sequences at the moment are playing back at 120 BPM because that's what the host is set to. Now let's go back to load preset and select my favorite kind of 80s drum machine from templates. When you load in a template, what you get is a drum kit with an empty sequencer, ready for you to start programming in your own beat. But I have to say that although this is where I like to start work, 
picking through all the patterns and the drum kits provided by Bram and by such a spectacular array of talented guests gave me a really good idea of how to get the best out of this app. Across the middle of the groove box here we have a step sequencer with 16 steps much like the drum machines of the 80s and 90s. If you've never used a step sequencer before, don't worry, it's as easy as putting on a hat. Let's press play. Now you'll see here I've got kick selected, so anything that I put here into this step sequencer is going to be a kick. Let's have a four on the floor there. And then I'm going to go over and select tambourine, and we'll put some tambourines on the off beats here with a little extra thing here to just make it a little more interesting. Now that sounds quite nice, but you'll hear that that tambourine sounds a little rigid. But down here, we have a velocity control for each tambourine hit. So let's just vary them up a little bit, make it sound, you know, just a little humaner, I suppose. Is humaner a word? I think I just invented it. Okay, so there's a little more variation going on there. And I think this would be a good point to talk about the soul control. What the soul control is doing is it's adding tiny variations to the pitch, decay and velocity of any sound that gets triggered, just to make things a little looser, a little bit more, again, a bit humaner. -er. So <laughs> let's turn the soul control all the way down just to show you the difference when it sounds much more rigid. But I'm not a fan of that exactly perfectly on the grid thing there. So I'm going to put that all the way back in. And I was going to tell you about shuffle, but I've forgotten something. Let's just solo the tambourine so I can show you this, which we do with a long press. Now let's open up the mixer, which we're going to talk about later. So we'll just come out there. And now you can hear a little more clearly the randomness that we've got going on here, which is nice, really nice for a groove box. Okay, and if I unsolo with a long press and close the mixer, I'll show you the shuffle control. Now, as I dial in the shuffle control, it's adding a little bit more swing to the groove. I think if I dial this all the way in on a groove like this, it'll probably sound a bit pants. And maybe not so pants as I expected, but I think it probably sounds better somewhere around here. Okay, now I'm quite liking this pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it, select pattern bank number two, and paste the pattern into there. And then we'll add a cowbell. Now what I can do in this velo velocity section, excuse me falling over my words, in the velocity section down here, is instead of adding a note into the step sequencer, I can simply press and drag up to the volume that I want and it adds the note into the sequencer and here we'll have a louder one there we are all right that's quite nice quite like that let's have a third pattern and um, we'll copy that one as it is go over to pattern three and this one I think I will lose the tambourine yeah let's get rid of the tambourine And we'll have some extra cowbell. Yeah, okay, quite like that. Right, and we'll just random uh, randomize those cowbell hits a little. quite like that. Right, now we're going to go to the mixer. I'm going to not go to the mixer in this pattern. I'm going to go to it in this pattern. That's right. And I'm going to select the cowbells already selected. So I'm just going to show you that if I drag this over to the right, can pan the cowbell over to the right and increase the volume. So the higher I push it up, the louder it gets. 
and that's how I move the pan around. And let's do the tambourine as well while we're here. Shove that one over there. That one could maybe just be a little quieter perhaps. About there. Okay, now while we're here in the mixer, I'm gonna show you the distortion and compression. I'm gonna solo the kick and I'm going to add distortion and come out of the mixer. Now this here is where we dial in the amount of the distortion. And here we can select a distortion model. So I'll just show you a couple. I really quite like this one and uh, this one and this one, which I think I might leave it on that one for now. And then going back to the mixer, let's now solo the tambourine and we'll add some compression to the tambourine which again we dial in the amount of compression we want here and so it's compression model here quite like the pumping one for the tambourine it just makes it much more prominent now here's the the one slight limitation with this function if i go back to the mix mixer he said tripping over his words again stupid old hippie if i add distortion to the tambourine as well it will be whatever distortion i've already dialed in because the distortion and compression settings are global so adding the compression to the kick is whatever i dialed in for the for the tambourine let's just add everything to everything quite like that now while we're getting a little bit wilder here I'm going to show you this control I'll just bring the volume down a little bit because adding distortion and compression has just increased the volume slightly okay now we can introduce with this control here an amount of re-triggering for any given instrument randomly selected by hammerhead but in order for that to happen we need to dial in a chance of it happening so let's just there we are okay so chance is the likelihood of some re-triggering taking place and chaos is the amount of re-triggering that will happen when it does so let's make the chaos extreme but with less chance of it happening Okay, and now more chance of it happening, but less chaotic. And now let's just go full on extreme. Okay, now I'm going to turn that off for a moment so that I can show you this more effectively. This mutation control will move your Whatever you've put into the step sequencer, it will move it around slightly for you. So to best demonstrate this, we'll solo the kick and then introduce some mutation. And you'll hear it's just here and there moving one of the kicks to change up the groove for me. So let's go on, for, let's go for full on mutation. Then we'll unsolo and hear what effect that has on the whole groove. So now it's mutating every drum in the sequence. Okay, now let's bring that chaos back in. Okay, now currently I'm on pattern two and it's just, let's just bring the volume down slightly more again. Okay, so pattern two is just playing round and round because this here is set to manual. So the pattern will not change unless I manually select a different pattern. If we move this to random, then Hammerhead will just randomly select a pattern.
and on sequence it will go through them in numerical order. Okay, I'm going to freshen up the sound now a little by going and loading in a new template. Let's go with mini pops and you'll see that I've got the kick drum selected here and the velocity parameter lane for that bass drum number one selected here. But if I select one of the other component parts of the kit, you'll see that the velocity lane moves along to the one appropriate to that instrument. But I can also toggle those with these up and down arrows at the side of the app. And across the bottom of the app, we've got some other parameters that we can investigate. We're gonna take a look at those in a minute. And I can also toggle through those with these arrows. Now, before I do anything else, let's go to bass drum number one, go to the velocity lane, and let's just throw in a bit of a kick we'll have something let's press play and something like maybe yeah okay that'll do us and then i'm going to change the instrument that we have here by going to sounds now in sounds you'll see that we can go to drum synth where we can create a new sound for that instrument we can go to use a sample where we can import our own sample. For now, I'm gonna show you this. We're gonna to go to classic where we can load in any drum hit from any of the provided kits. And I am looking for glass hit. Now let's come out of there and okay, we're on the velocity parameter lane for glass hit. So for every other note, I'm gonna dial in a random velocity. Right, and now I'm going to go to pitch. Now, with these controls here, we can move the note up to one octave in either direction. So let's just see what we can come up with here. Okay, not bad, it'll do for now. Right, so we can change the pitch of any of these drum hits and use them in a very musical, very creative way. Moving along to decay, we can make all the notes last a very short time or a little longer or something like their full length. We could make them start off full length and gradually get shorter, do the opposite. That was a bit random. God, I love this mouse. Okay, or just basically pissy pants around with it till we find something that we kind of like. Moving along to chance, here you'll see that each hit has a 100% chance of happening. So let's reduce the chance slightly on all of these notes. Now, occasionally, some of these notes are now gonna miss. We could make it so that they're less likely to hit as we go along, or more likely. Whatever, whatever works. Or just have a general pissy pants around. Now I'm gonna lose these glass hits here. I just want one so that I can show you flam. Now, a flam, if you don't know, is like a ghost note that happens almost immediately after the actual note. So if I dial in a flam here, you can hear that ghost note there. And the more I drag this down, the closer that note gets to the original hit. Okay, let's take that off. Move along to re-trigger. Now, let's pull up this bar here. All right, 
So now that hit is re-triggering multiple times. And the shorter this little tower is, the less it re-triggers. Simple as. Right, now to show you a start point, I'm gonna to need to select a different instrument. So let's just, we'll go back to re-trigger, take that off. Okay, and I'm gonna to go to sounds and what would last a bit look vibra slap is a slightly longer yes slightly i could probably choose something better but i think this will serve so now start point imagine that this vibra slap is chopped into eight pieces if i pull this up one slice the very beginning of the hit is missing pull it up two slices three can we do four there you can just hear the very end of it tailing off like i say i could have i could have picked a better example but you know i think it, you know i think you can see what i'm driving at let's take a look at channel configure in this panel, any changes made can be made to apply to a whole pattern by selecting all or just one individual instrument. Let me give you an example. This pattern I threw together. Let's say we want to get rid of that cowbell. I select modify this and press clear. Or if I wanted to get rid of the whole pattern, select all and press clear. Now suppose we want Hammerhead to generate us a random pattern for the kick. We'll select kick, modify this, random. Let's try a new one. Okay, and now let's generate a random pattern for the whole kit. Alright, now what we can do is we can alter the amount of steps in the bar. We can change the amount of divisions. So basically, we can play around with the time signature which is something you can't do in many apps like this. Now you can also apply these changes just to one instrument. So let's just get uh, back to 16. Okay, modify this. And let's take that cowbell and change the divisions, right? I'm not going to get deep into this. I'm just going to do enough for the demo just to show you what's what. You can see how you could use this to create some really fascinating polyrhythms, etc. All right, now I'm going to show you how to use the drum synth. There are two ways I can get to it. First of all, I could click on sounds or I could simply just tap on the instrument and it will take me to that same panel. If I want to audition how the drum sounds right now, I can tap here. But I have an external keyboard connected, which you will see here. So I'm just gonna keep tapping on that because that's a bit easier seen as I'm using a mouse. So, that's what it sounds like right now. Over here in the oscillator section, we can change the waveform and pitch at this side. Let's just have a little pissy pants around with the pitch and you'll hear the differences in waveform there. I think I'm probably gonna stick with a square wave. Let's bring that pitch down a bit. 
Okay, now this control here. If I wind this round to the left, at 12 o'clock, by the way, it's more or less ineffective, I believe. But if I wind it round to the left, we have frequency modulation. And we can get some pretty mad sounding kinds of metallic y sort of sounds on this side. And the rate control, when this control is wound around to the FM side, the rate control is going to determine the frequency of the modulator wave. Around this side, this control does a completely different thing. It will make a higher pitched note drop to a lower note. Let me turn up the decay. And the more I turn up the drop, the more extreme high pitched note dropping down to lower note you will hear. And as I bring up the rate, the longer it takes to get there. This, if you're wanting to make 8 to 8 sounds, I mean that's not really my bag, but I, I think this is, this is what you're going to need here. Okay, now let's say if we're creating a snare noise, we're not, but let's just say that we were, then we would need to introduce some white noise and we get that here. If I wind this around, the more I wind it around, the more the white noise is introduced. Let me just turn up the decay of the white noise and bring this down a little so you can hear it more. There we go. Right. So, wind up the decay so that we can hear lots of white noise and then you'll hear how, how the balance is dialing in more white noise and less of the original sound. And the higher I turn up the filter, the higher frequency noise we get. But I don't really want so much of that. I want to bring this back up. Okay. Like in that, just, just maybe a, a little in there. Right, now the resonator. This will add like a metallic-y sounding decay, which I'm going to find very difficult to describe, I think, so I'm just going to show you what it does. Let's bring up the level. And the decay. Maybe if I bring this back again. There, now I can hear it more. Okay. <laughs> right. Now I'm just going to play with the frequency control. Uh, let's take that decay back. So, I mean, I think you can see that, you know, with this drum synth, you can get quite an incredible range of interesting sounds. So let's just try and make one now. Uh, I'm going to bring this back up. And I'm going to... Also here what we can do is we can ask for a random sound or we can copy the patch that we've just made and then paste it over to another instrument let's say if we were if we're making toms for instance we might want to use the tom that we've just created copy it across to the next instrument and then maybe just change the pitch of it and pissy pants around with it a little bit now I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to throw some uh, some of these on here like this and let's just press play mm, okay ah he already messed around with the pitches here let's maybe do something else with the pitches perhaps Oh, 
Okay. And uh, let's unsolo this because I've got some drums on this track. Okay, this sounds a little bit loud maybe. sequence to this video you heard me playing guitar over some music and all of that music was coming from these three instances of Hammerhead. Here's my guitar track which I no longer need so I'm just gonna remove that just to save on some resources. Now over here this first instance of Hammerhead is playing back my bass. Let me just press play and solo that. one of my beloved bass guitars which I sampled more on that later and here is the Lindrum the template that comes with Hammerhead with a little reverb on it but you'll notice there's no snare there that's because I'm sending the snare to one of the multibus outs because I wanted to use some cleaverb on the uh, on the snare and I wanted to have a lot more reverb just on the snare in fact I wanted to use a lot more multiple sounds but unfortunately my iPad couldn't cope with that and then over here we have um, the guitar and the synthesizer I've got two loops in here a rhythm part played on my sparkly gold strat and the synth part on the obxd but if i solo this track there's nothing coming out you can see the volumes pulled down anyway because i'm sending both of these instruments out to multiple sounds so here i've got the rhythm guitar going to the 20th anniversary guitar thingamabob and here we've got obxd And that's going to Elliot Garage's classic effects. Let's just put all the instruments back in. So I better tell you how I did all of that. So for the bass guitar, I went into Koala and I recorded my bass from the low open E up to the first octave E. All the notes of the E minor scale played a short punchy note on each one of them. And then I saved those samples into an audio share folder. I then pulled those samples into Hammerhead by going to Sounds and Import and then you simply navigate to the folder that you want, select the sample that you need in that slot. So here I'm wanting E1, select that, and pull it into Hammerhead and then what I did was I used the sequencer to arrange my bass grooves. Now, the only thing that you have to get your head around here is that if you do it this way you have a different note on each one of these as you can see I've labeled them all because I love to label things and so like say when I want the octave E that's there and the lower E's are here and so on and so on there's my G etc etc and actually because I'm showing you this in standalone mode this will just give me a little chance to show you that when you're not in a host you use the play button down here to start and stop your groove.
Once I'd finished working on my bass, I mixed down my bass and drums in AUM and exported that eight bar loop to Cubasis 3, where I then recorded some clean guitar and OBXD with no send effects on it and mixed those two tracks down separately, both as eight bar loops. And then I brought them into this instance of Hammerhead by going to sounds and import and then all you have to do is navigate to the folder where you've saved your loops to and just click on it and drag it into hammerhead now a loop like this will need to be set as a one shot if you want it to play back at the pitch and tempo that you've recorded it at but if you wanted to change that um here we go here's both loops playing back at their original pitch and tempo if I change OBXD to say two bars, so Hammerhead has repitched it to fit two bars. Let's try it at four bars. Okay, so you can create some very interesting effects doing this, but obviously for my purposes, what I need is the one shot. Now let's say you've got a loop that you want to trigger more than once in a pattern. What I would do is, let me just come out of here and I'm just going to switch off the OBXD so we're just hearing guitar. Right, we'll go over to the guitar pattern and what I'm going to do is put choke mode on and then I'm going to trigger the pattern again just here. So what it does as soon as it's going to trigger the loop again, then it kills this one off. Now, because the guitar and synth parts that I brought into Hammerhead are both eight bars long, I needed the patterns in this instance of Hammerhead to keep moving through all eight patterns, because if I was just looping around one pattern, then it would keep on triggering the loop at the beginning of every bar. So what I had to do was a little workaround, because I found that I couldn't make the pattern sequence if there was no content in them. So I had to go to uh, the tambourine and I just put a very quiet tambourine at the beginning of every bar in every pattern. And then I was able to sequence all eight patterns. So that made the guitar and the synth last for the correct duration of time. But I didn't end up with a tambourine on the track that I didn't want to be there anyway because I have the master volume of this instance of Hammerhead turned all the way down and I'm using a multibus out for the guitar and for the synth. Okay, new project. Let's have a look how we add multibus outputs from Hammerhead in AUM. Now currently we have this pattern playing and this pattern uses all eight of the instruments in the kit, but they are all coming down this one channel as a stereo mix using the mixer here to sort out the pans and levels and everything. What we're gonna do now is go over to this plus sign and we're gonna add a multibus audio unit instance. Now the only instrument that we have open at the moment is Hammerhead, so that's all that's going to appear in this list. But what would appear in this list would be any instruments that have multi-output buses available, because not all AUV3s do. So we select that, and that now gives me a track purely for kick drum. And then if I go and add another one, it's going to give me another track just for snare and so on and so on. Now this is still going to play the kick and the snare as part of its stereo mix. So if we're going to do a full multibus out of all eight instruments so that we can mix and add effects to individual instruments in AUM, then we would keep the volume of this one turned down.
OK, now let's have a look at the multibus out options available in Cubasis 3. At the moment, I have this 4 bar preset looping round and round. It uses all of the 8 instruments available in the kit, so it should make a pretty good example. I just come out of here, press stop for a moment, and I need to go to where it says Hammerhead here and click this plus sign, add 8 tracks. Now from experience, those eight tracks are gonna play back really loud. If I show you the mixer, it's added those eight component parts of the kit at zero dB. Plus we've got the original stereo mix, so that's gonna be pretty loud. So I'm just gonna come here to the plus sign and add a group track and add all those individual drum tracks to the group track. We don't need to add the original instance of Hammerhead. Now I just need to go to my mixer and I can pull down the volume on that a little bit. Let's play that. Now I'm gonna solo my microphone and then scoot over here and just show you the original instance of Hammerhead is still giving us a stereo mix. So I'm gonna pull down on that, get rid of the solos. Okay, now you can actually, even though you've got multibus out, you can still use the mixer inside of Hammerhead to do your pans and your volumes. But what I would probably do at this point is level them all off, get rid of the pans, and then use the mixer in Cubasis 3 to do all of that. And of course, then we can add effects to each individual drum, and we can add some reverb sends, etc., etc. It's a great way to get a really professional mix out of some drums that you've got out of a groove box. Right, so what we can do is, here is the kick, and I'm just going to solo my microphone again. And there we go. And then I'm gonna solo the kick drum track. If I wasn't doing a demo here, I'd go through all these and label them because I do love to label them. I'd have kick and snare and hat, etc., etc. Stop waffling, you stupid hippie. Okay, so here is just the kick alone. Let's freeze it, turn it into a WAV file. All right, and now let's have a listen to the WAV of that kick. Now what happens is, when you freeze some drums from a hammerhead pattern, you don't need to have any MIDI information in these tracks here as you've seen it will freeze the MIDI information that's going on inside the patterns in Hammerhead and it will do that for any of the eight tracks that you've added I can of course put my own MIDI notes into a piano roll and send those notes to Hammerhead using it just as a bank of drum sounds if you like in which case I've no need to have the play button activated and I can still use the distortion and compression let's just add some of that on here and if I freeze this track it will freeze with those effects activated and it will be absolutely fine but I cannot use the re-triggering I can't use the glitching or mutation those things can only be applied to notes in Hammerhead's own sequencer another thing that we can do if I just come out of here what do I need to do let's just delete this MIDI go into Hammerhead and we'll load a preset I have one that's not necessarily brilliant, but we'll do the um, user patches, DMX Insanity. It's not necessarily brilliant, but it will highlight this thing very clearly. So let's just press play on there. Right, we've got lots of glitching, lots of mutation going on. Right, I'm going to just record this into Cubasis 3. We need Hammerhead open. Let's just make that smaller. Okay, let's press record and record the MIDI from Hammerhead's patterns into Cubasis 3.
Okay, now let's just take the play button off in Hammerhead and play this back. Notice how it's recorded the MIDI information into Cubasis 3, but when you use it to send back to Hammerhead, all the glitching and mutation is gone. I set up this very simple little groove in AUM just to show you one of the things that you can do with the MIDI coming out of Hammerhead. So let me just mute this track here and this one. In Hammerhead I've set up a very very simple groove but I've got it mutating. Let's just lose the mutation. Alright so that's the very simple groove that I programmed and then what I'm doing is I'm sending the MIDI information out of Hammerhead into Troublemaker here and also that same MIDI information is coming to Rusemaker FM. So if I just unmute Rusemaker FM We've just got kind of a double layer of drums, but what I've done with these drums is I've used some kind of silly quirky sounds just to kind of thicken up the double layer, added some effects to it, and if I just unmute Troublemaker, okay, so we've got a bass line going on as well. So whatever comes out of Hammerhead is going to match these two instruments perfectly. So when I add the mutation, it's sending that mutated information to those two instruments as well. Now if you've got some sequences programmed into Hammerhead and you want to live jam with them using maybe some external MIDI controller to shift between the patterns rather than having to press on here, leave this set to manual and then connect to your external device or in this case I'm using the on-screen keyboard in AUM so you can see what I'm doing and let's pull that up here. Now C1 is pattern 1, C sharp is pattern 2 etc etc. So let's just pull up the volume here and we'll have a little jam. And that's Hammerhead, an absolute delight to work with, fast, easy workflow, everything about it is a pleasure. It's really, really simple to use, even though it does so many things. I just, I can't get over how well designed this app really is. And I think that this release will secure the legend of Hammerhead for many years to come. And I'm very pleased about that. Now this turned into a very long video because when Hammerhead first came out, all the other YouTubers seemed to put their videos out immediately. And I'd already committed to making certain videos for certain apps and I did not want to let those developers down. Just didn't seem a fair thing to do. So I thought what I'll do as an experiment, I'll make a long video that includes everything I can think of that anyone might need to know about Hammerhead. Although I did miss one thing which I'll cover in just a moment. And I'll time code it so that people can visit this video, maybe not to watch the full thing, but to brush up on a certain aspect or to learn one thing. The thing I missed out though was down at the bottom right hand side of the app, there's an arrow, click on that, rename your preset, and then you can save the preset somewhere outside of Hammerhead. Or you may wish to share it via email or airdrop or whatever. Once you've renamed your preset, all those options will open up. Now, if I have missed anything, then please do comment below the video, ask your questions, I will get back to you, I will help you, I always reply. Down below the video, you will find links to my website, 
merchandise, Patreon, Bandcamp, etc, etc. Ways you can help out the channel, all that stuff. Until my next video, please take care and be good, make lots of music and do not pissy pants about. See you later.